Hello, and welcome to the Disconnected Gamers Podcast, where we reconnect with life and gaming. I'm one of your hosts, Andrew, also known as J-Bond. With me, as always... They don't know by now, it's your boy, Mike. It is. <sighs> What's going on? What's good? Just, uh, it's just a lazy Sunday today. Fuck you, motherfucker. It's your birthday, bitch. Nope. It's Happy a lazy birthday. birthday. Happy birthday birthday that's what it is just everybody else in the podcast ass. if you listen in right now say happy birthday mike <laughs> anyways it is sunday 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 no monster truck rallies today but maybe next week july 19th <laughs> episode 3030 30 people still want to listen to us after 30 episodes which is just You're fucking better she damn, damn. Anyways, all right, so I'm going to roll through a few things, but this is, this, like, because I, I, I just grabbed a couple news articles, and, like, some of them, whatever, you probably already heard, but, so, Evo, fighting mm-hmm. tournament, mm-hmm. it's this weekend, and Evo. Jamie Lee Curtis oh. has a son, right, and he apparently mm-hmm. likes video gaming, no problem there, so right. she took him, but she dressed up as Vega, so she could be incognito, mm-hmm. right? And then all these news agencies reported like, oh, my God, Jamie Lee Curtis is here. Here's my honest to God first response. Who the fuck cares? (laughs) Who cares? Like, are the kids fucking, you know, battling it out in Marvel going to be like, oh, shit, that's the mom from House Arrest. Fuck. (laughs) No, like, I just, I don't care. This is not news. Right. Jamie I mean, Lee it's, Curtis it's being cool at she Evo. Up, but, but my thing is, is she like, dressed up cares. because she wanted to be incognito? Who the fuck was going to recognize her? And who cares? Like, was she afraid she was going to get hassled by all these kids? Like, really? No, they wouldn't care. This is, this is my thing. Like, th- that's my, like, big moment of, like, get over yourself. Oh, yeah. Like, Jamie Lee Curtis, yes, yeah, she's been in films. She was in House Arrest. She was in a bunch of episodes of NCIS. Uh, as a psychiatrist or like a, a government psychiatrist, I think something I don't know. She's whatever. She worked with Gibbs, uh, Gibbs character, and I I just I like when people somebody had tweeted like, oh my god, Jamie Lee Curtis is at Evo, and then all of a sudden all the news agencies started reporting it, and I'm like, do we care? Who's who's that bored that? They're just like, hey, here's something to put on the news. For uh, well, no I reason. don't even know if it's like, but I, my thing is, is does it like? I like are is she like this is the thing like Jamie Lee Curtis seems so irrelevant to me like is (laughs) she in any major TV series that's on like you know what I should probably let me IMDB this right Right. quick important um because like I just don't know why it's a big deal right no yeah exactly I get you I get you uh let's see what is she currently in she's in a oh she's in a TV series called Scream Queens that I've never heard of in whatever new girl is no idea but she was only in like a handful of episodes mm. i mean she's known for the halloween movies but right. i mean yeah and then she oh, was like... in yeah she's in a bunch of episodes of ncis in 2012 um mm. so that's the like that's my that's my thing like i don't know if it's even a if it's just a even deal, a big yeah. deal i just it's one of those things where i'm just like do we do i care like really is this yeah. Is this Wait, a, is this a big is this is it a big deal because they're making it a big deal or is Jamie Lee Curtis showing up to a video gaming event to bring her son? Okay, sorry about that. No, that's fine. Uh, we can probably edit it because I just yeah. kind of stopped talking when I realized you were busy. Um, or we can just leave it in. Who cares? Uh, I just don't get why. I just I just can't figure out why this is such a big deal. Like, right, yeah, is no, it is it a big deal because like Jamie Lee Curtis is like. You know, in a weird way, validating Evo as a big event for people to go to. Like, I don't know. I just, I think her son wanted to go, and she took her son, and this is her being a human being, bringing her kid to a place, and she dressed up so because she didn't want to get noticed, and then you noticed her, and then you did the exact opposite of what she wanted to do, bring right, attention exactly. to herself. But is she, is she that intelligent that she was like, I'm going to do this incognito so that when somebody recognizes it's me or I purposely let it slip that it's me, then somebody will report on me trying to be the person not getting attention but getting attention, which is equally as fucked up? 
You, right. Because it's like, did you do it knowing that people would make a big deal out of it because you tried to be incognito? And that's, again, I I just don't think it's – I just <laughs> – yeah, if I didn't a... – if, if nobody told me Jamie Lee Curtis had gone to Evo, I wouldn't right. have thought less or more of Evo. Yeah, I wouldn't really I just cared. see it as her son wanted to go, so she brought him. Cool. Right. Yeah. Like, here's a cool story. I was in Disney once as a kid walking through the uh, – well, what the hell is the name of the family that does the Christmas lights? Um, oh. Dang it. I keep – for the life of me, I can't even think of it. Uh, uh, hold on. Disney Christmas lights. It's called – Osborne Family Spectacle of Lights, right? There that. You go. So we were walking through that, mm-hmm. and I start to notice that there's like nobody around. Mm-hmm. Like we're like alone, and there's this one other group of people, and they're all in suits. And I'm like, what? The? Mm-hmm. And like, I- I'm a kid. I don't know what that. I'm just, I just right. kind no, of, I'm yeah. like, hmm, nobody, whatever. So I'm just kind of moseying around, and mm-hmm. I hear my brother going. It's Jimmy Carter. It's Jimmy Carter to my father. And, of course, I'm a kid. I don't know who Jimmy Carter is. And I almost bump into this guy. And it's, unbeknownst to me, former president Jimmy Carter. Jimmy Carter. And the men in suits were the Secret Service. And they had just kind of – he wanted to see the lights or whatever. So they fucking hmm. – Brought him in, but like I – whatever. I mean social media now would have been like Jimmy Carter visits Disney, but uh, – Who cares? <laughs> Well, I guess now maybe it's a big deal for when presidents do stuff, but like back then, mm-hmm. like it yeah. wasn't, you know, that what he was just, but it's one of those things like, I don't think that's newsworthy that he went to look at Disney, you know? Right. But like in today's age, anything is news if it's a thing. So, True. Uh, you know, man farted on subway, breaking news. <laughs> uh but like that, like that was equally as cool an incognito story. My problem is I was a kid and I didn't know. I would just was kind of just moseying around. But like I almost bumped into, I guess, the, the former president of the United States. Um, closest I've <laughs> ever been to a president, I suppose. Um, Fair enough. Okay. And yeah, so it's just, I don't know. I just think that, I think that Jamie Lee Curtis is. I say this about a lot of people. I think they're, that she's probably a fine human being. But, like, mm-hmm. I don't care. I don't care that you went to Evo. I don't. Right. I think there are other things that people could be reporting on. That, oh, yeah, for sure. Like, so. Uh, but that's me. Uh, sure. I agree. I agree. So that's that. And, like, if you don't like me, fucking whatever. Shut off the podcast. Uh, <laughs> seriously. I just, it's one of those things. I just, but I, I'm so, like, I have such a short like amount of patience when it comes to shit like that i mean you know obviously from right, our yeah, conversations yeah. outside of the podcast like where shit just bugs me for like because i just don't get i just don't get why anyone cares i don't right it's yeah, more, it's, it's it's the same thing with like with uh like gay marriage like i don't why do people care right yeah it's, why it's, do it you it care like if it, like, it's a matter. i just you're not getting married with me i'm not marrying you so what the fuck does it matter if you two want to get married like i just just i just doesn't it doesn't affect me so i don't care jamie lee curtis going exactly. to evo does not affect anyone except for the people that were there so like whatever i'm not comparing jamie lee curtis to gay marriage i'm just saying like it's one of those things where like i don't get why it's yeah like it, it shouldn't be that big of a deal yes exactly like this is not a big deal um right and hey gay people can get married now so um or there at least go. in the united states i suppose um so good for them just be you know my thing is is like get married and be miserable like all the other people who are married <laughs> yeah, exactly exactly i'm sure your divorce rate will be probably along the same percentage right basically um so yeah so that's the jamie lee curtis thing you can google it if you want more information yeah but uh it's just yeah I don't know, just whatever um so only other so that i get a couple other things uh adventures of pip which I played at PAX East. It's by TikTok Games. It's a 1-bit, 8-bit, and 16-bit game. Interesting. Yeah, so your character goes between 1-bit, where he's just a little cube, and then 8-bit, where he's kind of like a... He's an 8-bit character. Uh, and then he yeah. can transform into a 16-bit character. Uh, and each each bit version of Pip has different abilities. 
<laughs> so you have to transform between the different versions of Pip to you know get through the game. Sure. So pl- it's a platformer. It's uh so that just it's on uh, iOS and Steam already, but it just was submitted uh, on the seventeenth, so two days ago, to uh, PlayStation and Microsoft for the final submission testing, where they do like the final bug check and make sure that right, like, yeah. trophies and achievements and all that fun stuff. Nice. Um, so that's pretty sweet. It's fourteen ninety nine on iOS and Steam, so I imagine it'll probably be fifteen bucks. On probably PS4. yeah, same on um, PS4. Especially. Pretty fun game. I I enjoyed it. it. I had a lot Sounds of fun cool. playing it. So so that's something to be keeping your eyes peeled Definitely for. Definitely keep an eye on that. Yeah. The other thing is there's a PlayStation Flash sale which ends tomorrow, uh, the twentieth at eleven a.m. Sci-fi Pacific. sale, I think. Is yeah, it? the sci-fi. It's all sci-fi deals, but like Borderlands Handsome Collections, thirty bucks on PS4. Mm-hmm. Uh, Deuce oh. X, Deus, Deus X, X, yeah. whatever. Whatever. That's six. Yeah, bucks, whatever. Six bucks on PS3. It's a couple of Vita games. There's a couple of movies: District Nine, mm-hmm. Gravity. Geometry Wars, Nom Nom Galaxy, Star Wall, um, Blade oh, Runner movie, Cloverfield movie, Bioshock <laughs> Infinite's eight bucks on PS3. Nice. Terminator Two, you can buy for six ninety nine. Oh, Borderlands Ultimate Edition, six bucks on PS3. I assume that's just Borderlands with all the DLC. Yeah. yeah. Pre sequel on PS3, nineteen eighty. It's a pretty, pretty big discount. But uh, so yeah, so there's that. If you know, if you listen to this before the, you probably won't honestly because I don't know that I'll have this uploaded in time. So you probably have already missed it. Uh, sorry. Other thing. Hey, our bad. Yeah. What? My bad. It was. It's a flash <laughs> sale. That's they're there in a flash. They're gone yeah. in a flash. That's gone. Yeah. Um, See, it's there. I don't think that that was a relatively good flash sale. I don't. There wasn't really, like, unless you yeah. didn't already have Borderlands. That's kind of like the only big thing worth getting. Right. Not to pick on games like Star Wall and things like that. Like those are fun games, but bang right. for your buck, man. And then this is a Polygon article by Owen S. Good, which is funny because that means his name's Owen's Good. <laughs> but uh, Xbox One streaming to Windows 10 is available now. So, Saw that. Yeah, so Windows 10 apparently launches in 10 days, which is cool because my tablet and my Alienware Alpha are both eligible for free upgrades. So I'll hopefully be able to so. get that done. Uh, but with anyone with a device running it and an Xbox One may start streaming games from the console beginning now. Xbox last update, Xbox One's last update, added support, which Microsoft turned on Friday. So any Windows 10 device, mobile included, can receive the stream from the console. Uh, the Xbox app on Windows 10 likewise will update several features, including a beta for party chat, uh, share screen, video captures, blah, blah, blah. Uh, Microsoft announced support for Windows 10 back in January. Preview program got it a month ago during E3. Windows 10 will be a free upgrade for those running Windows 7 or 8.1. Oh, that, that's cool. That means I probably can upgrade my laptop to Windows 10. Um, nice. Because that's just Windows 7. Um, more information to how it works click on this link whatever so that's that's kind of neat um only because yeah, pretty cool. my thing though is like do i need to stream the xbox one to my computer or wouldn't i just turn on the xbox like uh, the xbox one has to be that's on true, yeah. to work so like i don't i i guess my problem is i'm i'm curious as to what the advantage is you know, mm-hmm. is it like basically giving you the option to use your computer as a capture device for the Xbox One? So you're sending right. it through and then you can, you know, output that without needing like an Elgato as you're in between. <laughs> right. Um, that like or... Just put that, like, could you put that, that streamed feed directly into like XSplit as a thing? Like, Oh, so it's a, it's just straight up you're just streaming it. I guess I don't know. I honestly don't know exactly how it works. There was like another article that I did not It's like play. Uh, the Wii U, where you could use the tablet, and not the TV. I wonder Maybe. if it's like that. So I, I assume free that's your TV much different. Your monitor, because I, don't know. I just assume the Wii U is using different architecture to send it to the tablet because it's not really streaming it to the tablet. It's like right, right. it's just going. That's that's the source, you know, direct output for Shoot. source. Uh, either way, I don't. I'm. 
interested to see how this works or exactly what the advantage of it is. It would be more unique if it was like remote play. Right. You know? If I can turn my Xbox One on from my brother's house and we can stream it to, you know, my laptop and play Halo on my laptop while at his house, That'd then, be I'd, cool. then I'd be, okay, that's some pretty cool functionality. I, again, really don't know how it works. I just, it's just yeah. apparently, because I can't check it out yet, and I'm not going to go watch someone else's videos on it. I'd rather just, yeah, just check to... it out for myself. Exactly. So that's that. Um Otherwise, what you been up to? Pretty much still haven't slept yet. Hmm. Yeah, just been on no sleep. So I guess, I guess technically I, I haven't not been doing anything. I was just hanging out, hanging out with my people. Noise. What so, they were doing, like a photo shoot thing or something. Oh, uh, cool for the cosplay stuff. Yep. Saw that. Oh, I saw that thing about Jason David Frank. With the that you'd posted on uh, on Facebook, apparently he's not great. Yeah, I guess he's he's kind of a, he's rude or whatever. Yeah, kind of something like that. Yeah, that's one of those things. I always read that, and I'm always like, there's always two sides to every story. Exactly, that's all I was saying. Like he could have just been having a bad day, and yeah. you know, just didn't really. Wanna... So I mean, I know that that's there's people, people, people who are just this. legitimately a holes, but. Right, because I've heard good things about him, and then some people be like, "Oh no, he's kind of a you know a hole," but you know everyone has an off day, so right. So I don't know. As of our last podcast, did we talk about Satoru Iwata? I don't remember. I Had think he we died in between. Mentioned it, but we were like, "Eh, I don't know if we should." We weren't sure if we should cover it or not. Well, yeah, I wasn't gonna put it on the website because oh god, yeah, right, no, no, no. Uh, everybody else in the world. No, I had ordered Balloon Fight. It was one of the games he helped make, or nice. might have made entirely. And so it was twenty five bucks for this NES game, which is kind of that's kind of high to me. That's a, that's a like I don't think that the you know I'm sh- all of the copies of Balloon Fight were high. And my question was, I wished I'd known how much it was going for before he died, to see mm-hmm. if the price had actually gone up because oh. of his death, or if right. Balloon Fight is just a more rare game. Because generally, what it comes down to is the the original like NES action mm-hmm. series games, I suppose, you know, where it's just got the angled text and the just kind of generic yep. uh, typeface, sure, like Balloon yeah. Fight, RC Pro Am, Mock Rider, uh, mm-hmm. Mario Brothers. Those games all have that. Generally, Space. tend to be more expensive, um, maybe mm-hmm. because of rarity, uh, because they're the right. older, more original launch games, I guess. But true. Uh, Either way, um, it was the cheapest one I could find was twenty five bucks. So I complete like nope, box and everything. Just, or the just, game. Oh, just a game. Just a game. Not even a sleeve. I had. I have extra really? Nintendo sleeves. For the the games. like black. Yeah, plastic, plastic or whatever. Plastic yeah. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Got that. Of course, I brought Oops. my NES to my brother's house and was like, "I'll just get it next time I'm over." And I haven't been over ah. for like a week, so right. I can't play it. Um. I wish there was this is the one thing I wish there was though a Super Nintendo adapter like Super Game Boy that played NES games. Oh, something similar to like the what's Super it called Game that? Boy. Uh yeah, 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 yeah. But there's no like Super Nintendo. There's no like Super Nintendo, you know. Right. Super NES adapter. I wish like an there NES was. adapter kind of Yeah, like Sega uh, 32X but that was playing yeah, 32X yeah. Mm-hmm. games. Um which in and of itself is a pretty badass add-on. Um, that is pretty cool. But yeah, so I picked up Balloon Fight. I haven't played it yet. I mean, I've played the game, but I haven't played it off this cartridge. Um, oh, hey. So it is what it is. But it's you know it's kind of a bummer that he's you know that Satoru Iwata died. I was thinking about it, and I was just like, that sucks. It does suck, yeah. Like, it does totally suck. Cause it's just like here's a guy who, you know wasn't even that old he was like 55 and apparently I, not in as good health as most might have thought i guess but they said it might have been cancer or something like that by a bile yes. duct thing that's what it's oh yeah on. i don't know what, okay. what exactly that is didn't, no idea yeah i didn't google it so um so yeah that's it's a bummer because it's just like 
weird like and it's weird when i think about this like when i think about like musicians i like and i'm like they're like 50 plus or like actors mm-hmm. you know we like actors or actresses right. and like you start looking at their age and you're like oh like robert downey jr is 50 years old like yeah you know obviously he's got some time oh but yeah, it's just yeah. it's one of those things where you start to like think about it and you're like fuck i'm old and so are these people mm-hmm. and so like when people start dying and you're like oh god damn it yeah, so, like you just... know what's the world gonna be like without i mean hideo kojima is only like 53 hideo i think so kojima i think he's 51 he's 51 51 okay uh, and his birthday is next month. Um, you know, what's the world going to be like without, like, Hideo Kojima, Shigeru Miyamoto? You know, what mm-hmm. happens when we start to lose these... Talented. This, these talented people who made all these games that we've been playing for the last decade, you know, two decades, it, three decades in some cases. Well, you would hope that it, you know, obviously these devs, they're all influences for other people so you would think people would carry over to the next generation not, and not so much do what they did but you know something similar in the spirit of what they did yeah yeah so i wonder if nintendo what well, I, I don't know i wonder what nintendo's going to do obviously of course they're, they're moving on but i mean well they had said shigeru and there was another person will like interim take over his position until i guess as they put somebody else in that position uh, I, right. my guess is i see shigeru miyamoto probably ultimately taking it but at the same time it's like i don't think he wants the position this way you know? right uh is he still, like a he's pretty much still dead isn't he yeah like he, he still likes to, I think with, he still likes to keep his hands dirty you know he still likes to still works close with yeah, yeah. that's actually nice. let's see how much he is how old shigeru is 60 62 wow so he kind of almost doesn't he really doesn't look that old and Reggie is 54. Wow. They really don't look that. Nope. Like... Yeah, wow, it's crazy. Yeah. Like, even even Gabe Newell, right? He made Valve. He's 52. Mm-hmm. Wow. He's worth a billion dollars? Holy crap. Jeez. That's why he's not making Half-Life 3, people. <laughs> He doesn't Stop. need your goddamn money. Right? Jeez. Uh, and that's as of 2015. Jeez. Yeah, I just Googled it. Net worth $1.26 billion. Space. He went to Harvard. Oh, there you go. $79.3 billion. That's a lot of money. Yeah. But, uh... Yeah, I don't know. I, I, the games industry is in a weird... I, I mean, I said for a long time, and I think it's still probably true, we're at a point... We're coming to a point where the gaming industry is going to implode, and then it's going to oh, yeah. rebirth. And I I imagine the implosion will happen probably at the end of these console life cycles. Only right. because that's the moment where it's going to be a huge shift in the way things work, because... You know, mm-hmm. in the next 10 years when PS4 and Xbox One become PS5 and Xbox Two or fucking Xbox Whatever, 720. Yeah. Um, Whatever you want to call it. Yeah. You, there won't be discs anymore. As much as right. it pains me. They're I don't think they're going to much... have discs. So they're going to get rid of discs. They're going to probably have the Morpheus, the HoloLens, the Oculus. Mm-hmm. Those are going to be like intrinsically attached to them whether we want them or not. You know, it'll be the connect 3.0 or whatever Jeez. Um, right and i think that that will be the the moment where things tend to shift because there's going to be resistance like i don't i mean i think it's True. i think what the potential for like vr and hololens and, and oculus and all this stuff i think it's really cool i think mm-hmm. that uh in the next few years hopefully we'll see what happens I just think the I think my problem is is nobody's really coming out swinging with like hey it's two ninety nine hey it's one ninety nine hey it's seventy five right. bucks hey it's four hundred bucks. Oh, jeez. I just don't see myself buying them for several right. years because I just don't think I would would spend the money on it. And there aren't there's not enough games, and I'm not going to be the early adopter who buys. Right. Yeah. I can't use. It just it's just kind of 
Like, Meh. I think Minecraft is cool. Not buying a HoloLens just for Minecraft. No. I do think that that will help them build it up because I think there is a huge community behind Minecraft that'll be like, yeah, totally. Oh, I'm, yeah. I'm on board. Right. Do it. Um, do it. So, it's... Yeah. Yeah. But... What you been playing? We'll sh- we'll shift. We'll shift out of depressing things, and we'll shift into oh, what you've been playing. She got back on the, the PS3. Took a break from PS4. Besides Rocket League, of course, but we talked about that already. Yeah. Uh, just jump back on Kingdom Hearts. Trying to get back into Metal Gear again. It's Metal Gear. It's a mix of stealth. Or anime, or whatever, whatever you want to call Kingdom mm. Hearts. Are you playing Kingdom Hearts because you're like getting ready for the new one? No, I just I just actually I've never beat it. it. Yeah, I've actually never beat it. So, Fair enough. one of the one, whatever percentage, small percentage of people that just never beat it. Yeah. So going through that, and then Metal Gear, you know, fucking love Metal Gear. So yeah, I'm always playing that. I still don't get ground zeros, man. I'm still kind of frustrated. It's the not shooting thing. Like, I don't get if it's like the game is trying to make it so I... Because I know my triggers work on my controller. I right. I know that they work. But, like, literally, I'm playing the game. I'm aiming to look at a guy, and I'm holding the button all the way. Hmm. And it is not firing. It's really weird. It's so really just, weird. So I'm just wondering, like, what happened... And then, of course, I'm like, oh, is there, like, a sensitivity thing that I can adjust or anything? No, nothing. Nothing? Hmm. That's, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, like, I literally have to mash the button into the controller for it to eventually fire. And then it generally just fires for, like, a second. I'll have to go back and check that out. Because I'm pretty sure, for me, it just, you know, does what I what I needed to do. Yeah, just because I'm like, I just, because I play the non-stealth way where I just shoot everybody quietly. <laughs> right. But... I can't because I can't ever get like a headshot because I can't fire just like one bullet. It fires like six or it'll fire none. Oh, uh, right. So can't. I spent like, I spent, I spent like 20 fire. minutes just running around in a cer- in circles, hiding behind stuff and just killing every single enemy. I had like an alert for like 30 minutes. Oh, jeez. On that first part where you like right when you climb up the water. Because I'm like, well, I'll just shoot the first dude in the tower. Just right. Drop and him. Just call- yeah. yeah. Then I can maybe strangle the other guy, get into the gate, but I can't do that. I gotta just straight take them all out. Mm-hmm. Because that first shot from to the guy in the tower usually misses, and then he climbs down. Yep. He's gonna look for you, and then the bitch. Yeah. So you either gotta try to take him out as he's walking towards you, or just whatever, take the alarm and just start guns a blazing. Yeah, which is generally speaking how I roll just it gets the job done but right yeah it's not in the spirit of metal gear solid you're supposed to go in and out and basically not kill anybody oh i mean you you can but yeah you can play it pretty much any style you want just my thing is you get overwhelmed because i don't think he cares that much ammo no not really i had to constantly pick it up from other people which is cool, because, I mean, obviously you could just pick up their guns, too, but I was like, no, 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 no I like the gun that I have. Uh, right? There's just other guns you can find. Yeah. I found, like, a, oh, I found a cassette tape somewhere. It was, like, on a dumpster. And I was like, <laughs> oh, this is probably, if I collect all of these, this is probably a trophy or something. Trophy or something, yeah. Um, but, yeah, I'm getting, like, this is now the third time. I might just delete it and reinstall it and see what happens. Because now I've quit out of it. I've restarted the PS4. I've done all this stuff, and it's just like it's frustrating. Because I know that the, it works. The gas, the gas button, the trigger works because Rocket League uses it for gas. Destiny uses it for shooting, and like, so it's not like a broken controller issue. So I don't quite right no, yeah. know what the deal is. Hmm. Actually, I haven't really been playing a whole lot of Rocket League. I play like maybe one match, one or two matches a day. Yeah. I played I mean, ranked though. That was cool. How'd that go? It's basically the exact same game, except the points like go to a different thing. But the funny <laughs> thing was, is so me and this these this team of two guys, because I just joined into a random game. Unlike you know, fucking Prison of Elders, where like on the high levels you have to have teams. Um, right. 
Got it. And we like smoked the other team. And two seconds after the game ended, it he sent me a friend request, and I was just like, mm, pass. Yeah. Nope. Like, nope. Sorry. Yeah. I mean, I get it. We did good. We had good chemistry. We scored. We got points. But no but, thanks. Nah. I'm all set. All good. So that was. That was it. But I mean, it's fun game. I just didn't want to deal with. Right. Yeah. Those types. Don't want to deal with all the bull. Yeah, pretty much. It's just like man, no thanks. Yeah. It's a bummer too, cause like I keep going. Like I don't know if other people do this. If you're listening, mm-hmm. to the uh, if you're listening still, you like tweet us at the DG Cast. Like, do you ever just like scroll through your like PlayStation list? Mm-hmm. of games and just go there's nothing to play sadly enough yeah i'm like i don't i don't want to play this like yeah eh. i don't know and then you just shut it off or yep. or i just leave it on just leave it on yeah and what's weird is normally i would just throw netflix on and just like put a show on so that at least there's something going right on. yeah and i'm like Back i don't even noise, do just... that yeah same i'll just leave it on i'll just yeah. sit there and just like what the hell I'm just kind of like, mm. well, it's good to know I'm not the only one that does that then. Yeah, I just, I just, I don't know. I like, I look at all my games and I'm just like, man, I wish I had something else. My problem is, right, it's like I still don't have GTA 5 and mm-hmm. you guys keep rolling on it and like I should just go pick it up after this podcast. But uh, <laughs> I'm just like, <sighs> yeah, if I it's had just it, I'd probably play it for a little bit and mm-hmm. then I wouldn't play it anymore. And it's right. like, I don't, I don't know what this what this this yeah. thing is am i like am Can't i having it. am i having video game fatigue am i just like i get you am i just straight up burnt out because it's like i work all day then i do yard work then i get inside and i'm like oh now i'm gonna fucking stare at a video game all day and you just rather not and i just rather just like do nothing or just sleep Right, but I don't. Exactly. Wanna, but then I don't sleep. I just sit there, and that's what's the frust- most frustrating part, right? Right. It's like I, I, said, do, you I could go to work. Play a game, I work. But... I get home. I then do a couple hours of yard. Usually it's like two hours of yard work because I try to. Because I I get out into the backyard by like six thirty, six forty five. Usually it's kind of around when I get home, and then you know I cut back a whole bunch of stuff, and then I, you know, then I gotta cut it up and then put it in the truck, and by the time that's all loaded. It's like eight thirty ish, and then I get the truck out of the backyard and into the driveway, and then I go in shower, and then the rest of the the evening is mine. But it's like at that point, I'm just like, oh, I don't fucking want to do anything. Yeah, because it's just getting late. And you're like, I don't want to stay up. But then, whatever. and then it's like, and then I'm like, all right, I'm gonna play video games. But then I'm like, everybody should want to play video games with me right now because I want to play games. Right, it's like let's roll, and then either no one wants to roll or everybody's rolling already on a different game. Right, Um, which is why we have a love hate relationship with Destiny. Pretty much, that's a whole other story. Yeah, you could listen to us rant about that another episode on our previous episodes. That is true. Um, but, um, so that's that. Yeah. I like honestly, I haven't even really bumped on Destiny, and I had no desire to bump it on yesterday because or this past weekend because Zor had no weapon, which was, I they said the was a glitch. That was a, they said it was just a glitch, but they said there was no way to fix it without like probably um, basically removing it, having to take him out anyway. So it was, and it wasn't like they were probably just going to put him back in like for an extra couple days because they screwed up, which is what they should have done, but. So instead, they're like, he'll be back next week with a gun, and, you know. Hmm. So instead, you could get that helmet that I already have. Yeah, I got it. So. I don't Got know. that, and then shut know. it off. Or turn in a bounty, and then shut it off. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. I don't even know if I'm going to get Taken King, but I don't know. I uh, yeah. Um... It's just part of those things where you have no desire to play it. But then I'm gonna get it, and then I'm gonna play it for a bit. Right? Yeah, we'll get it'll get hype again, and then 
it'll be the same old like ah okay i'm done with this right like even like and this is a bummer for me too right so journey is coming to ps4 and yep, galaxy that. galaxy mm-hmm. is finally announced uh, mm-hmm. i think that's tuesday isn't it journey's tuesday galaxy is next month next month um mm-hmm. And I don't, as much as I enjoyed, as much as I enjoyed playing Galaxy, like, it's one of those, it's like The Last of Us. It's been so long that Uh, I'm just like, eh. Yeah, you wait so long, it's just like, okay. And that's like, it's a frustrating thing for me because I think the game is great, but I'm now at a point where I'm just like, I'll just, I'll Eh. wait or whatever. Yeah, it'll be on plus eventually. I well, no, I'll probably still end up buying it, but I'm just gonna like. Oh, just like no rush, yeah. yeah no rush. Now to I'm just get in it. no yeah, like I'm in sure. no rush to be like whatever. Um. So it's, yeah, okay, I get you now. Yeah, like Adventures of Pip, I'm excited about. Um, we'll see. Yeah, that's cool. Because because at least that's like it's got a story. It's I mean not that Galaxy doesn't have a story, but like it's it's a more it's traditional something. game. You know, it's a, it's, right, just yeah. an old school platformer. Yeah. Um because I find myself playing older games more often than not now. Like I've been playing the Super Nintendo, uh playing the NES when I had it set up before I brought it over to my brothers. Uh nice. and when I'm at my brother's house now, we're not even really playing games anymore. We finally went back to playing pool. Nice. Because he's got a pool Switch table. So we finally were just like, fuck it, let's just play pool. So we played pool like right. three nights in a row. Um and it's like, you know, we occasionally will will play Halo or Call of Duty, <laughs> um, oh, yeah. but he like he didn't even renew his his Xbox Live. It's I have the Xbox Live, so I have to bring the Xbox One, which is whatever. I have the case to <laughs> yeah. move it around, but it's one of the things like even he like even he doesn't play video games nearly as much as we used to. Mm. But I like and then like I got back into Counter Strike, but even that it's like I I just play it casually. I don't go into the competitive nonsense or anything. Oh, I no. specifically look for the casual playlists and just right. shoot the breeze. Yeah. Not trying to win, just trying to pl- just trying to play. Just, you know, yeah, play a few rounds, whatever. Yeah. Stick around. So, um <clears throat> there was that. Yeah, and then I mean, we happy few. I'm in the I'm still in the beta for that. Still in the- uh nice. from Compulsion. That's- it's PC right now, right? PC and then right and then console later, or is it just uh, PC only? They're probably going to do it on console. Okay, I just, just PC right it's now. Like, yeah, it's just PC right now. Gotcha. Okay. Um, and that game is super trippy, in a good way. But it looks like it. I uh, will have to report back on that. But uh, one of my buddies, Prophet on Fire, was streaming this game earlier today called Dirty Bomb, and it's a free to play shooter. And it's on PC, and it actually looks pretty. Cool. It looks like a, a, a fast-paced blacklight hmm. that worked. You know, oh. it look it looks like it huh. looked kind of like blacklight meets Team Fortress meets huh. uh, cartoonish. No, not cartoonish. Very, very futuristic, realistic type. Ah, okay, gotcha. That's why it's kind of. Well- it's Team Fortress in the ten, in the in the terms of the kind of from what I watched him play the gameplay like mode because or... he had like it was like go stop them from uh, oh gotcha. fixing this okay. thing and then if you gotcha. failed that it would stop them from doing this and if you failed that it would stop them from doing this like there was an objective huh. to each game um, hmm. and then it was very much like Blacklight in the sense that it was futuristic and realistic and kind of gave me the same kind of visual. Uh, yeah appearance as blacklight kind of had but even just like slightly nicer um and then like he his character had like a sword and he could go invisible for like short amounts of time and just hack the shit out of people um which is pretty badass that was cool ah, it makes me wish i had a pc or a better pc yeah so i can check out some of this stuff so i'm gonna i'm gonna have to check that out um and see what that's all about because it looked it looked actually pretty good so if it is free to play uh it'll depend on it for me it'll depend on what keeps me in the game is how the free to play is like is it free to win oh is it it pay to win or pay to get like skins and other stuff right so which is 
it's funny that you bring up something like that. What? Uh, Street Fighter Five actually has something like that now. I guess there's in-game currency, and then you could put money into the game to buy new characters. And I think, like, uh, not cheats, but, like, enhancements or something like that. I don't remember. Hmm. But I know you can use in-game currency to buy new characters instead of... Like, they're not going to have DLC, I guess. Or, like, paid DLC. I guess you could either get it in-game with in-game currency. What game is this? Uh, Street Fighter V. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I did see yeah, something about new that. DLC thing they're trying to do, whatever. It's, it's DLC, but it's not DLC. Because they're trying to make up for their past mistakes of, oh, it's on disc, but t- here's nine ninety nine for whatever pack of costumes and that fighters. That was already on disc, yeah. 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 It's kind so of a weird thing. Up- it's got, like, prints. that's the frustrating thing, too, because, like, when you used to think, like, NES games, like, you bought the game, it had everything on it. You buy an N64 game, it has everything on it, you know? No expansions. There was no expansion pack. It was just Star Fox 2 or, you know, instead of GoldenEye or, like, Donkey Kong, it was, you know, then you had the expansion pack. And it was, like, the expansion pack, which added, I think, like, 2 megs of RAM, which is ridiculous right. to think about it. Um <laughs> Because, like, two megs of RAM made it so Perfect Dark would play, hmm. you know? Um, right. And, you know, it enhanced other games when you got the expansion pack, but it didn't change what the games gave you. It just made them, like, run a little yeah, better. Yeah, just made it run a little better, yeah. So. That is pretty That's funny. That's one of those things where I'm just like, well, there you go. I guess you get what you pay for. Yeah, but my problem is now you don't really... I mean, you get what you pay for, but you don't get what you pay for with video games. I think it's very... It's different now. You right. Know, like, there's an element of many games where they're like, all right, this is what we're going to give people, and this is what they're going to have to pay to get. And that's the right. part where I'm like, you are literally telling me you're making a thing that I have to buy <laughs> with the intention of knowing I'm going to have to buy more stuff. Yep. So, and I think in, in like Naughty Dog's case, like people always say like they don't do it and I'm like, Yes they do. There's microtransactions yeah, all over Uncharted two and Uncharted Three and mm-hmm. I'm sure there will be an Uncharted Four, just like there are in in uh The Last of Us. Last you know, the difference is they're like weapon packs, but if you don't right. want to buy the weapon packs, they have those yeah. preset classes that at least give you that the option to yeah. use them. Right. To try stuff out, yeah. You know, that's at least, it's a better system. I also think in terms of pricing, generally speaking, they're much more fair. You know, I think it's dumb to pay like 99 cents for a fucking hat, but if you really want the hat, you know. There you go. Pay the the buck. Pay the man. The hat stats. Yeah. Which was weird, but whatever, man. It's their game. Right. So that's that's why I'm just like mm, whatever, like, yeah. and 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 again, this is this is something I was ta- I don't remember who I was having this conversation with, uh, but it was and I and then it was on a uh, the uh, pointless podcast with um, Kevin Pereira. He was talking to somebody and he was like, I don't get why people bitch so much and expect things to change when they keep buying things. And I and, right. and it was it was the Call of Duty the stereotypical call of duty situation where like people bitch that call of duty hasn't changed but they keep buying the game so the sales would the sales team is looking at it going like we don't need to change the game the sales are fine in fact they're better than ever and then when they do change something in the game everyone's like change it back this is stupid change it back Mm -hmm. and it's like so what is it that you really want you know if you legitimately if you legitimately want something to change stop paying for the thing you don't like right yeah you know, exactly it's a sacrifice that means you won't be able to play call of duty 10 with your friends but the advantage is if you and you know your friends stop buying it and then a couple of their friends stop buying it and then a couple of their friends stop buying it and so on and so forth then all of a sudden they're like hey we sold 10 percent less copies this time around and there's mm-hmm. a big bigger audience of people saying they want something new to change about the mechanic 
then all right. of a sudden they have to start being like, well, we can't lose another 10%. Exactly. You know. It pressures them to do something different. And, like, it's not pressures them to do something different, but I mean, they want to change it so that way they get their consumer back, or the consumers they lost back. Right. So that's why I'm just like, vote with your wallet. Basically. Which, which in fact, in uh, I, I went on a mini Twitter rant about this like a week or two ago about how like people just need to vote with their fucking dollar. Just don't go there. Don't shop at a place you don't like. Don't force sure. them to do anything. Cause it was, it was regarding the, um, was it that cake? It was the cake thing. Yeah. And I don't want to get yeah. too much into it because I'm not trying to make it a political thing. My whole, the, I don't, the, the politics of this is totally side separate issue, whatever. Um, the whole concept and it, cause I'm more focusing on this for the video game aspect. Like, if you don't like the game or you don't like something about the game, you're never going to get them to change it if you buy the product. Because right, it's cause... in your hands and their and your money is in their hands. And they don't care what you think after you've bought the game. Like, nobody sure. cares what you think. After, like, nobody is running campaigns to make you feel good about products you've already bought. They only run campaigns to make you want to buy the thing. There's sure. no... Oh, you don't like the way the Apple Watch feels on your hand, even though you yeah, just we'll spent four hundred dollars on it. No, here's a new strap. Yeah, yeah, like they're just they're like, hey, you need the Apple Watch. Right. Yeah, they're gonna market it to where you you know where you really want the product. So like, if right, you yeah. keep saying, "I really hate Call of Duty," stop buying it. Stop yeah, buying exactly. it. Don't buy it anymore. Basically, otherwise they are going to keep selling it because you keep buying it. And that's and that's literally it. That's that's pretty much the the name of the game, you know. If you don't want to see, uh, you know, and it and it's a perfect example of like certain games, right? Like, there's no more Twisted Metal. It didn't sell yeah. very well on its last copy, or maybe it did, and whatever. But like, you know, there are certain games that just didn't sell well, so they didn't make another one. It's true. You know, obviously, I mean, think about Capcom. Remember, didn't they? Or was it? Was it, is it Capcom? They weren't going to do Final Fantasy VII until such and such a game sold. Square Enix. Square Enix. Yeah, they, uh, were, they were like, no, we're not doing this game until you, you, so we sell this many copies of this game. Yeah. I think they said they weren't going to do... Yeah, they weren't going to do nothing to do with Kingdom Hearts until they sold enough copies of a specific Final Fantasy. So, it's like... I, my problem is I, I I don't I get the people like I'm a gamer they should care because I'm a gamer they don't care they care because you're giving them money they exi- like like <laughs> they're like the indie get indie devs give a shit about you the major corporations right, yes. like you know the Konamis of the world don't really care about you they really care about your money They've because that's what they're in the business to do they're in the business to give you a product to get your money. So they are going to do the best balance of giving you what you want without having to work really hard, I suppose, to get your money. And that's like, I've just fucking chunked the gaming industry into like a two minute thing where I'm saying all they want is your money. That's a general oversight, but that's any business in the world. Walmart right. wants your money. They're not it's being loose. they're like their game wasn't let's give people the lowest price so they can always buy from us so we'll make a shitload of money. No, they just they're selling you a product with good margins to get money from you. Right? Like yep. you know, That's why they live put better up, or whatever. You know, but they put yeah, the problem is, is Walmart puts tons of other companies out of business because of that. So mm-hmm. it's you know, you gotta you, whatever. So I just I don't know. This this week has been. I apologize if this podcast kind of went fucking everywhere. It's this week has been frustrating. Yeah, a bit frustrating. So I wasn't super prepared. Um, but yeah, I don't think. But uh, realistically, if you have been hanging out, oh my god! Uh-oh. I totally forgot. So. PAX Prime is mm. coming up in August oh, at the end of I told right isn't this this is how fucked up this week has been I totally forgot about this best news ever um, oh yeah so I will actually be on a panel at PAX Prime in August 
this year. Nice. Um, so it's my uh, uh, PAX Prime is in Seattle. It is from the 28th to the 31st. Uh, Four day event, I think. And so my panel is on Monday, August 31st. It's at 11 a.m. It's in the Sasquatch Theater. It's called The Five-Year Plan, Your Roadmap to the Industry. Um, I will be paneling alongside Trey, um, who works at Design by Humans. I'll be alongside Dave Voyles, who's from Microsoft. He's a game dev. He's also um, He works with the indie devs that want to get their stuff on Microsoft. I'll be with Britt Brombacher, who's um, at Blonde Nerd on Twitter, and also Malik Forte from TheNerdist.com. Uh, his Twitter is at malik 4 play nice. So, yeah, I – wow, I totally can't believe I didn't even – we had your birthday and then this panel, and I totally, <laughs> like, forgot that I'm doing – so, anyways, I'm going to be talking about this a lot, maybe – uh, over the next few weeks, my Twitter Spread feed the word will out. probably na- like show it because I'll probably be hyping it up and trying to make sure that people are aware of it. Um, so yeah, so we'll be talking about getting into the industry in a in in the more realistic sense. I think is is I'm trying to to gear it that way because I I just uh, I don't like bullshit. Right. And the reality is is like I, we've been doing this, you know, we've been doing stuff in the video game industry for years and. You know, I don't make any money doing this. This is a, this, right. I do this for fun. I do this because I want mm-hmm. to work in the industry, and the, and doing this helps me build skills to get into the industry. But like, you know, if you were to th- if if you're listening to this and you're like, man, I want to work in the gaming industry, like it's not easy. And I'm oh, I'm saying that as a person who still isn't even in the gaming industry. Mm-hmm. Um, so just basically, that's kind of where the the panel is going. And the other four people on the panel actually have like industry foundations that i don't have so they'll probably be giving you far better advice than i ever could but we'll all be just kind of talking about how you can kind of get a plan to to make it into the industry at right least. Yeah. or if, if, if or try like a just a better shot out of the gate than just because it's you're not going to go to school for game development or coding and then walk out of college already with a job right right no God, you no. know, and no, that's no, no. that's kind of the given for many job careers, job paths in the mm. industry, or not this industry, but right. just any. You know, most people don't just necessarily leave college with a job, or at least a. Uh, the expression is gainfully employed, um, right? Rather than just like, yeah, yeah I work at Starbucks, or I work at Lowe's, or I work at Walmart. You know, you work at a company that does what you do doing the thing you went to school for right making a good salary so uh yeah i totally blanked on the fact that we're going to be doing a panel so my apologies (laughs) there Uh, you go so that's yeah now you know and we'll talk about it more i'm sure in the coming weeks um it's it's like 40 days till pax so be there uh, yeah, I mean, if you're there, come say hi. I'll be there anyways because I'll be doing media stuff, uh, you know, during the the regular convention. But obviously, being on the panel is kind of one of the coolest things ever. Ever. So, yeah, I think I don't know. I think that's good. Do you have any shoutouts? Yeah. Oh shit! Jamie I had Lee one in my head. No, 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 no. <laughs> no. I had one in my head, and then it escapes me. I'm, you, Besides you know, the usual, you know who your you know who your shout out should be. Who? John Cena. You should walk out to his walkout music at Pax. <laughs> I was honestly, I was thinking about having some sort of uh, intro music, <laughs> just because, but I don't know yet. Um, <laughs> John. Don't know what people would say if we did shout him out. I will, you know, we'll shout out John Cena. Why not? We'll shout him out. John Cena. Yeah, yeah, you see me. me, now you don't, or whatever the hand thing is. Whatever, yeah. Yeah, well, next week's podcast will be far better than this one. Uh, <laughs> this is on the, on the whim. Well, I would say this was, I'd say this was like a, f- a 5 out of 10 on the podcast rating scale. Yeah. This was definitely a ramble episode. Yeah. Sure. Um, For sure. So yeah, uh, 
that'll do it for episode 30 yeah. of the Disconnected Gamers podcast. Uh, we will catch you. That's it.